A remote jewel of land off the coast of Canada, Fogo Island floats in the northeast corner of the northeast province of Newfoundland and Labrador, the outstretched right fingertip of this continent. The place might be drop-dead gorgeous, but it wasn't immune to the fate befalling so many small and isolated communities in North America. Its one and only industry went into steep decline, and so in turn did its population. Then, about a decade ago, a local returned home, fresh off making a fortune in the tech sector. Her pockets were deep, so was her desire to lift up the place and bring people back. So she unleashed a sort of economic experiment. As we first told you last fall, we took two planes, a long drive, and a ferry to reach Fogo Island and check on the early results. The story will continue in a moment. The saying here goes, you'll know the Newfoundlanders in heaven. They'll be the ones who want to go home. And the adage comes to life on Fogo Island, a 90 square mile patchwork of 10 minuscule fishing villages where clapboard houses the color of jelly beans cling to rock 400 million years old. Among its quirks, Newfoundland has its own time zone, half an hour ahead of the mainland. But wander through Fogo Island's villages and you might as well set your watch back to the 18th century. Back then, all you needed to get by here was a pig, a potato patch, and something called a punt. A small wooden fishing boat used in pursuit of North Atlantic cod, the species that once kept this place afloat. Seemingly every structure on the island was built in service of catching and preserving fish with one gleaming exception, a $40 million luxury inn. Part edge of the earth destination, part economic engine on stilts, the inn is the brainchild of eighth generation Fogo Islander Zita Cobb. And locals gave her a funny look when she first floated the idea. What kind of reaction did that get? Why would anyone come here? We love this place, but it wasn't obvious when, you know, there are fancy places in the world that people go. Our assumption is everybody wants to go where it's warm. Someone suggested to us it looked like a ship. The architecture of the inn was obviously a topic of much conversation. I think about it as a metaphor. It's about people from here and people from away. It's about the future and the past. The past looms large on Fogo Island. To fully appreciate the inn, even as a metaphor, you have to understand Fogo's history. Just something. Zita Cobb took us through dozens of tiny islands that dot Fogo's waters to a place called Little Fogo Island. And for those keeping track, that's an island off an island off an island. This is a slip. Her ancestors landed here from Ireland and South England. They came for one reason. Fish, fish, and fish. <laughs> when you say fish, is, is it just a given? It's a given. So in, yes, when we uh, say fish, we mean cod. Is it possible to exaggerate the importance of cod to this place? No, it's not possible because everything that you need to know about someone from here, you can figure it out by just studying that lowly fish. It's actually quite a noble fish. A noble fish? It asks very little and gives so much. They exist on almost anything. I mean, I think a cod could eat a rubber boot if it had to. Not unlike the noble fish, Zita Cobb's family survived without fuss. In cod, they trusted. Families worked side by side here, trading their fish for goods. No bank accounts, no cash. Cobb's parents could neither read nor write. She and her six brothers grew up in a house with no electricity. She says it was a happy childhood, until it wasn't. What happened? The worst of the 20th century came down on top of us very quickly in the form of the industrialization of the fisheries. So these enormous factory ships showed up here, uh, all along the coast of Newfoundland, and fished day and night until just about every last fish was gone. With one small punt launched from this one dock, Cobb's father couldn't compete with commercial vessels that had come to the North Atlantic from all over the world. How bad did things get for things him? Got, people go out and come back with nothing. But one day in particular, he came back with one fish. And he brought the fish into the house, and he slapped it down onto the kitchen floor and said, well, it's done. And it was the next day he burned his boat. He burned his boat? He burned his boat. It's almost like a sacrifice. It like. was. He did it as a statement. I did, he did it as an expression of pain and anger. 
Lambert Cobb made this sacrifice once he realized that those big boats were, in his words, turning fish into money. He said to me, as a 10-year-old, you have got to figure out how this money thing works. Because if you don't, it's going to eat everything we love. He wasn't wrong. As fish stocks dwindled, so did the island's population, from 5,000 to 2,500. The Cobbs left grudgingly for the mainland in the 1970s. Zita Cobb's father died shortly thereafter, but she heeded his advice. She got a business degree, worked in fiber optics, landed in Silicon Valley, and before long was the third highest paid female executive in America. In her early 40s, she cashed out tens of millions in stock options, dropped out of the winner-take-all economy, and took her business savvy home, determined to revitalize Fogo Island. Instead of writing a check, she posed a question. What do we have and what do we know and how can we put that forward in a way that's dignified for Fogo Islanders and creates economy and connects us to the world? Spend one night at what the locals call a shed party and the answer emerges. When you think about the people of this place, if there's one thing we're really good at, it's hospitality. What does hospitality mean here? Hospitality in its purest form is the love of a stranger. We didn't get a lot of strangers. And uh, when they arrived, as my mother used to say, it's always better to see a light coming into the harbor than a light going out. So in 2013, Cobb built the biggest beacon in the harbor. She made the Fogo Island Inn the centerpiece of a charitable trust called Shorefast, with profits reinvested in the island. At $2,000 a night, the inn does turn a profit. But there were other considerations. We're going to put a 29-room inn on an island that's never had an inn. What are the consequences of that? Well, more people will come. Well, how many more people? As one woman said, well, you know, we're only 2,500 people. We can only love so many people at a time. Shorefast and the inn employ more than 300 islanders. But the real payoff is the ripple effect. For starters, all the furniture at the inn is locally made. Same for the pillows and quilts. It so happens the women of Fogo Island have been making them for their own homes for 400 years. We're getting there. We got half done. Word is out now. This quilt is destined for a customer in Baltimore. We joined the quilting bee. Watch him, Millicent. <laughs> but didn't last long. It was all very nice except for this one square. This is our lettuce room. Shorefast so puts up are... seed money for new businesses, too. A quarter of a million dollars so far. And then you put your plant in? A $7,500 microloan went to Dwight Budden and his father Hayward, a former fisher who left Fogo Island when the industry collapsed. He's back now as a hydroponic farmer, growing greens for the inn. Yeah, there's our kale. kale. Yeah. Yeah. Does Hayward eat kale? Not too much. Not too much. <laughs> Beyond the kale, new culture is taking root. Futuristic-looking studios now speckle the landscape part of Shorefast's ambition to bring artists in residence to Fogo. And back at the inn, a chef turns cod into haute cuisine. If your dad saw cod with magnolia oil and sea and foam. Porcini, and porcini. And porcini. <laughs> yes. What would he say? Yes, he said, he, first thing he says, can you really eat that? You can do more than eat cod, you can fish for it again. Now that a decades long ban has been eased, Fogo Island's fishers are back hauling cod. We ventured out of Fogo Harbor with brothers Glenn and Jerry Best, uh, you know, better fish than that. the fifth generation of their family to harvest these waters. You go east, your next stop is Ireland. Ireland? We're not going there today. <laughs> and over and like that, right? The Best brothers showed us the traditional Newfoundland way of fishing with a hand line. 150 feet down, no rods, reels, or nets. Now we're talking. That's a beauty. Up comes cod without much of a fight. Yeah, now that's a go. nice cod. That's probably a 20 pound fish. Cod is making a comeback in the North Atlantic. Canada still imposes catch limits. But when the best get down to business, they use an automated system to drop thousands of hooks in the water at a time. We watch them offload 20,000 pounds of cod from a single trip. What's more, shellfish has done the unthinkable and dethroned cod as king. Crab and shrimp now make up 80% of Glenn Best's business, and he's never had a better year. You told me you caught 400,000 pounds of snow crab. At 760 a pound, is the 
Yeah, it's pretty good. Three million bucks. It adds up. Yeah, it was a good year. But a thriving fishery isn't always enough to keep the kids around. Best three children have moved away from Fogo to pursue other careers. Your family's been doing this for generations. You named this boat after your dad. So the sad part about it is that Jerry and myself, we probably could be the last generation that will fish within our family. When the day comes that you, that, that happens, that will probably be a, a sad day. Still, Fogo Island's population has stabilized. There's hope the next census will show an uptick. Babies are the island's biggest celebrities, but as ever, with growth come growing pains. It's already become one of those islands where you have to pray to get a spot on the ferry. <laughs> Jennifer Sexton spent summers on Fogo Island visiting her grandparents. She recently moved here from Western Canada to open this coffee joint, where locals mix with those who come from away. Everybody asks about the inn. What do you yeah. tell them? Um, well, it's, um, it's a blessing and a curse. Her regulars grumble that not long ago, they could get a home for $25,000, Canadian. Now, homes cost 10 times as much. For somebody from away, that wouldn't be a lot. But for somebody from here, that is a, a lot of money. Zita Cobb, the woman who turned this tide, says she doesn't want unchecked growth either. As the economy grows, we will be smaller as a percentage of the whole economy. A rare business leader that wants less market share. <laughs> we want less market share, exactly. You said it with a smile on your face, but there's a lot of responsibility here. Yeah, I mean, the consequences are huge because, um, as my brother says, yes, our, our parents will get out of the graveyard and wring our necks if we, if we mess this up. What's your response to the capitalist who would say, why are you limiting your growth? That is the techno-economic question. But I start with a different question. What are we optimizing for? We are optimizing for place. We're optimizing for community. The pillars of this community have been won over. If Cobb's experiment helps diversify the economy, Glenn Best says he's all in. It's not like we're overrun by tourism. That's not the way it works here. We're not, you know, we're not the, the Venice of uh, Newfoundland, you know. We're not out of patience with people yet. On our last night at the shed party, we got the full sweep of Fogo Island, its hospitality and its contrast laid out on the table. Cod and crab, young and old, warmth, wit, and this. Don't tell a traditional song delivered with a handshake, a kind of hope that comes tempered by history. The undoing of this traditional way of making a life was very painful. I think I still carry those broken hearts. I think that uh, kind of pain doesn't go away. To what extent has that been repaired by the work you've done since you've come back? Yeah, I think it actually does help. You can heal a broken heart. <laughs> Be satisfied with what you've got. Leave well enough alone. Well.